Hi everybody, Jessie here from jessiebanks.com and I have another coloring video for you guys. This weekend over at Passionate Paper Creations, we are having a sponsored weekend with Power Poppy. There are five images on sale, this being one of them. You can buy them individually for $4 a piece or you can get all five for $15, which is like half price basically. I think you save $14 if you buy all five. And the five images are this one, which is Apples in Season. The one that was released yesterday on the 15th, which is Black Eyed Susan. There is the Prairie Bouquet. It's over on my blog as well. I'll have a link to my blog and Power Poppy and the Passionate Paper Creations Facebook page. If you're not over there, you should definitely join us. But that Prairie Bouquet is on my blog. There is also the Sunshine of My Life, which is like a vase full of sunflowers. It's really pretty. I do believe there's a speed coloring video here of that one. And the last one is... <laughs> The, the buttercup one. So there's the buttercup, the sunshine of my life, the black eyed Susan, the apples in season and the prairie bouquet. Sorry, I had to double check and make sure I was right. So I'm coloring up the apples in season here for you. And this is a design team project. It'll all be posted over on the passionate paper creations, Facebook page. And I'm starting off with my leaves and I go in with BG 99 to begin. And then I go over to my yellow greens, my YGs, and that just warms up and brightens up my leaves but I find that when I use the BG99, it keeps those dark areas that I want to stay nice and rich really dark. So that's the whole purpose in that. So we're just slowly going through and putting in our darkest shadows. This is, it's not a longer video, but it feels longer for me to voice over. And that's simply because it didn't take me very long to color this one. Because I didn't blend all of my colors real nice and smooth and seamless. So everything's pretty streaky and that's the way I wanted it. That's the one bonus of coloring like leaves and flowers and fruits and things like that is not everything always has to be blended absolutely perfect. So this video is only sped up to two, si two times the actual speed I colored it. So I colored it in roughly 20 minutes and the video here is like 11 minutes and that's with the intro and outro and all of that good stuff. So we're just working through and putting in all of those darkest ones. You can see when I color, I don't keep my image straight up and down. I know sometimes that's easier for people to see what I'm doing, but I find that when I color, it's easier for me to turn that, turn the image around so I don't have to twist my hand around and all that good stuff. So definitely color the way that is most comfortable for you to be able to do it. Don't worry about like having to keep that image upright or anything like that. I twist it and turn it and work my way around all the time. So. So we're putting that color in and then as soon as I finish with it, I'm just adding a little bit of it around some of the, some of the flowers there, the little apple blossoms. So now we start with the YG97 and this brightens it up and I just slowly start blending out a little bit from where those darkest colors are, extending it just slightly. Like I said, I have other coloring videos of Power Poppy images, the flowers and all different flowers and all that kinds of things on my blog or on my YouTube channel here. And if you're not a subscriber, I would love for you to subscribe. Then you can see more of my videos if you enjoy watching my coloring. Um, leave me a comment down below if you have any questions or anything like that. I'll get back to you as soon as I possibly can. I know I'm out of town this weekend. Um, I'm at a wedding, so I'm recording this like Thursday and I leave tomorrow. Because why not leave things at the last minute? That's smart. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> but I'll get back to you after the weekend's over. And I hope you guys get to color and play and I'll pop into the group as much as I can and see what you guys are doing because I love seeing the way other people color things. I find it inspiring and I enjoy it and I pick up little pieces and tidbits I like from everybody's coloring and I kind of mash it all together into what I do. Because why not? So when I finish this card, all I'm going to do is crop it down to an A2 top folding card. There's a picture at the end of the card and it's also over on my blog and I just mat it on a red piece of cardstock and from the Creative Basics, which is Rhea's dies, I use the, um, I think it's Background Builders one and all I do is, is the pierced line. It doesn't cut anything. It just, I run it down each side just to add a little bit of detail and some piercings. I tend to do very clean and simple cards when I do Marcella's images here from Power Poppy because the images I blow up and they're so detailed and big and bold and I just don't want to take away from them so that's that's the way I like to do them and now I'm into that YG95 and I'm blending it out even further slowly starting to fill in the leaves okay 
take your time, color slow, you don't have to race through it. Oh, look at... <laughs> Did you catch that? Just dropped the marker lid and had to stop the video and forgot to edit it out. Sorry. Down to the bottom ones. Almost finished our leaves and then I think we do the apple blossoms and I make them pink because I like pink. It's pretty. <laughs> Now I have YG11, and then I go in with Y11 yet, I do believe, if I remember correctly. So this one, I'm finishing coloring everything in, and I'm just blending it out all the way to the edge. Have, that, have green all over the entire leaf now. And I thought I was going to leave it here, and then I figured, no, I needed to warm some of them up just a little bit. And that Y11 just seems to make everything nice and bright and vivid and... I use it all the time in with my greens when I do any type of greenery. It's become a habit. And I don't add it on every leaf and I just put it in certain places. Not sure what I'm doing there. My son probably wanted something. I really should have cropped that out. I'm sorry. That'll teach me for... So I'm using R35. Then I'll use R32 and R30 and my colorless blender just to make sure everything's blended nice. Sorry, my glasses are in the way there. I must have been leaning over a little further than I thought. So I'm just starting at the base of the flower and I'm pulling it in just ever so slightly. I want lots of white left on these flowers or some white left on these flowers when I'm finished with them. Just because they're so soft. I wanted to keep them that way instead of having them completely bright and bold. So I'm starting with a 35 instead of a darker color. I'll put that one in on all of the flowers first and then I'll go on to the next color. And where their buds and the flowers haven't opened, I am running them up along the edge of whatever's folded in behind just to create that little bit of a shadow and differentiation between the petals. Finish off the bottom ones. So I'm not worried about blending when it comes to this because when I come in with my zero marker, I kind of go over everything a little bit, which helps it all fade together. So R32 and I'm just going to go right over top of that 35 and pull it out ever so slightly. And I tend to work like this quite often. I don't do like a flower at a time. I do a color at a time. So I try and do everything that's go everywhere that needs that R32 gets that color before I switch on. I just find it easier for me. Now this R30, which is a super light color. And I probably could have done without doing anything else to them, but I do believe I go over them with the colorless blender. If I don't do it on screen, I did it off of screen and then I apologize. Oh, see, I did. See, I went over them all with the colorless blender just to soften everything up. I'm not sure why I didn't record that. So now I'm doing the apples, and I'm kind of following where she has the artist drawn lines just to create my shadows and kind of give the apples that round, round shape that she's drawn in there with her lines. So putting in my darkest color with the R89. And there's always that little bit of a drop shadow where the one fruit overlaps the other one. Nothing smooth, nothing's blended real pretty. Everything, I kept everything nice and streaky on these apples. I love them. I'm so happy with how they turned out. Then we do our 29, and I'm just going right over top and pulling everything out that little bit. Some places I go further, some places I don't. Glasses are in the screen again. <laughs> All the way through them. Then the R08, and I just carry on with that same process. 
when I go through all of my colors here, I don't have them written down or I'd tell you what they all were ahead and you could just kind of, yeah. <laughs> So if you're not a subscriber, I would love for you to subscribe for my channel. Um, my 30th birthday is coming up on the 1st of November, and I'm going to be having a giveaway here on this channel. R05 is my next color, by the way. So you can look forward to that one in a month and a half. And I, I'm getting more regular with my speed coloring videos now that school's back in session and my son's at school and all of that good stuff. The R35, I just decided it needed a little bit of pink. Why, I'm not sure, but I did. R02, and then I added some yellow to it yet before I finish. So yeah, so I would love for you to subscribe. Um, leave me a comment down below. If you have any questions, I'll get back to you for sure. Like I said, I'm gone for a wedding this weekend, so it'll be after that. I hope you guys have a great weekend. I hope you join in over at, Power, over at Passionate Paper Creations with Power Poppy, and I'll talk to you all soon. Bye for now.